This is the Sales Whisperer Podcast, Session 9. Can I get an amen? Today you are in for a treat, as always. I've got Casey Graham, founder of The Rocket Company and CaseyGraham.com. Uh, the Rocket Company was awarded uh, earlier this year, in 2013, as the uh, Marketer of the Year at Infusionsoft. Uh, so Casey and his team really know what they're doing uh, when it comes to sales and marketing and marketing automation. Uh, the Rocket Company is focused on uh, churches and pastors, uh, helping them grow their uh, audiences, their membership. And so he has expanded into CaseyGraham.com uh, to take his marketing expertise to uh, for-profit businesses. So you'll hear us talk about CaseyGraham.com. You'll hear us talk about The Rocket Company. Uh, please check out both. Um, but his main emphasis now, and it's most applicable to most of our listeners, uh, will be on CaseyGraham.com. Uh, Casey took time out of his day. He was traveling, actually pulled over on the side of the road. Uh, so we did this on my conference call line. It's a little bit grainier than normal, but the sound is fine. Um, but he took uh, about 40 minutes out of his time just sitting on the side of the road uh, so we could chat. So uh, enjoy the great insight from Casey Graham. Welcome, everybody. This is Wes Schaefer, the Sales Whisperer. And today I've got Casey Graham, a fired-up entrepreneur. Is that the best way to describe you, Casey? Uh, I think that's the way my friends describe me. My wife just calls me crazy. <laughs> Uh, your wife and my wife must be like long lost relatives, uh, but they put up with us. So that's a good thing, right? That's right. That's right. We're we're talking about fifteen business ideas before breakfast most of the time, and <laughs> now she just listens and uh, lets me talk, and then lets me get out the door and do my day to day thing. So, yep, same 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 deal. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, well, I'm going on 18 years with the same wife, so um, I think she's finally learned that I am crazy, but it's a good crazy, and uh, just enjoy the ride, huh? That's nice. <laughs> I'm halfway there at nine, so that's awesome. <laughs> Well, hey, thanks for coming on. You know, you and I actually just spoke recently, but uh, I I saw your great success at InfusionCon, so congratulations on the uh, InfusionSoft Marketer of the Year. Um, and I wanted to to have you on to kind of, you know, to tell your story again, to kind of inspire entrepreneurs both um, from a, a marketing automation plan, I mean, the things that you did, how you – how you approached a niche and stuck with it until you got it right, all right? right, and then how you're expanding, how you're leveraging that success to expand into other things, which is really what an entrepreneur is, right? Right. Um, so, so how did you get started? What, what is the Rocket Company? Well, the Rocket Company is the third iteration of two things that didn't work too well. So <laughs> I started <laughs> – Five years ago, uh, I left. Uh, I fired myself as a CFO uh, at a church. I was the CFO guy there, and I fired myself. Uh, the long story made very short is simply that I just saw a, you know how it is. You see a need, you see an opportunity, you see a something, and, and I saw that churches are just broke. Uh, you know, I don't know many people listen to this. You know, a lot of people they think churches have a lot of money because they see some televangelist and that kind of thing and whatever. That's just such a poor representation of what church really is. And so most churches are broke. 86% of churches were behind budget or at break even. And so um, we had been doing some things at the church I was at and you know how it is. And people are asking, what do you do? What do you do? What do you do? And when enough people were asking, I just said, you know what? There is something there. And uh, I saved up about $36,000 in the bank. I'd had saved up uh, just from saving you know, with the job and all that stuff. And my wife was working. We had no kids. And uh, I just said, you know what, let's do this. I'm just, I'm going to fire myself, quit my job. And that was in, that was in uh, July 1st of 2008, not knowing that four months later, the world financial world was going to collapse and come apart and, you know, all of that kind of stuff. But that's where we started. And I started out uh, doing this thing and it was time for money, kind of consulting stuff. And, you know, I mean, it, it, it worked, but I didn't like the way it worked because I always had to go be gone for my family and all this kind of stuff. And then I got the bright idea that I would do uh, outsourced bookkeeping for churches because I saw that they were terrible at managing their money. Well, that was a disaster, so it ended up being a disaster. I had a bad failed business partnership and all that stuff. And so this is about two two years into just trying stuff. Right. And then 
after doing the bookkeeping thing, the one thing I picked up, and that's the thing I teach entrepreneurs all the time, like, listen, even in the times where I was at my worst, there were things that if you'll just keep your eyes open, you can pick up that will translate into your next thing. And the thing I learned about was residual income. Mm-hmm. Now, for you being – you know, the sales whisperer and for all the people listening that may understand residual ink, that's great. I didn't understand that. I didn't understand automation. I'd never heard of email marketing. I'd never heard of uh, a membership program. None of that stuff. It was all new to me. Uh, but we had people paying us monthly for the bookkeeping service. And here's yep. all I knew. I said, I know how to help churches increase giving, and I know I like to get paid residually every single month. So inside of that, how do we do that, and how do we do that you know, bigger than we're currently doing it. And in my desperation, it wasn't out of smartness. It was out of desperation. I found Infusionsoft, um, sales and marketing automation tool. And from there, they simply said, when are you going to send your first broadcast? What are you going to sell? And I said, well, I don't have anything to sell. And they said, well, what, you know, do you have any audios or anything? I said, yeah, I have this three-hour audio. Put it up online, sent a broadcast out with sold a few thousand dollars in the first couple of days off 800 email addresses that I had that I'd never emailed before. Right. And from that moment, it hit me. It's like, this is what we got to do. And that started the whole journey over the last three years right. um, of, of forming the Rocket Company. And uh, we started with Giving Rocket, which is just a brand inside of the Rocket Company. And then we went to Preaching Rocket to help preachers preach better sermons because God knows we need better sermons. Um, <laughs> and then um, and then Volunteer Rocket um, now, which is our third brand. And so those are just little niches inside the church niche where mm-hmm. we have products and services that wrap around those. And so three years later, fast forward, you know, I was 80000 in debt and a whole stressed out, miserable. Three years later, we've grown by 832%. We'll be on the Inc. 5000 list this year. We just we just found that out, and uh, we won the right. Ultimate Marketers of the Year. Um, but point being, it took four years of, figuring it out to where we were able to really scale it. And so that's where we are now, and that's that's what the Rocket Company does. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. This You're not like an overnight success? Oh, I'm going to have to like pause this recording, man. I thought you had something like people can make a million dollars with tomorrow. So that, that's not the case? I do. I do. And it's, <laughs> um, it's this white powder substance that you can sell to get people high. It's awesome. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. But, I mean, l- literally, no, that whole – I, that's where I started learning though. So I bought into that lie um, that it was easy and you throw up a website and you have all this stuff. And man, if anybody's listening and you think it's easy to make money online, I got something else coming for you. It is not easy. It is very difficult. It's as difficult as any other business is. But right. what? But but the difference is once you figure it out, once you build the base you can replicate it again and again and again and again and again faster than just about any other business. So right. that's my two cents on that. Um, well, and that's fantastic uh, because I I tell people the same thing all the time. Uh, people are still chasing the, the shiny object syndrome. And, you know, and as an entrepreneur, I do the same thing. I, I, I keep testing things, but – you know, I've stayed true to my base, right, building building the saleswhisper.com, creating new content. So as I experiment and as I've matured in my business, you know, I, I keep finding new things, but I, I, I now evaluate them, say, how can this new thing enhance my core offering? Yes. Uh, and so if it doesn't make sense, then I can kick it to the side. Uh, but, yeah, I mean – Eventually, you, you got to find some type of niche and and go deep and, and and establish some solid roots, right? Which then helped you spin off those three brands and now create your your whole new CaseyGraham.com, right? That's right. Um, the point of CaseyGraham.com is simply we're taking because people listening go, oh, well, that's church world and that's different than my dentist office or that's different than my you know, um, barbershop or that's different than my online business, selling entrepreneur, whatever. Um, but the reality is, is that the fundamentals remain the same in whatever it is. And yep. that's what we've transferred out is we've transferred everything out of the rocket company and I'm putting it on caseygram.com and I'm putting out just tons of free content. And the reason is, is, it, it transfers, and I'm seeing so much success of people just taking blogs and going, I had no idea about 
how to build a list, and a blog just helped me on that on a practical level, not a 17-page workbook and 5,000 things you got to buy, but like here's just one thing you got to go do. And so that's what we've done at KCGram.com is, is we're starting to build that. And what we're looking for is we're looking for business, any type of business that's looking to uh, do something like we've done of using content marketing through automation to grow their existing core offering in their business. And so that's what that is. And so we have just tons of free content over there that, that, that could be helpful. Yeah, Dan Kennedy always talks about that, and, and I, I S and D, right, swiped and deployed one of his signs years ago. I got this big red banner, you know, it says, but Wes, my business is different, dot, dot, dot. You know, the idea is obviously yeah, he, to take that objection away. It's like, it's not different. He um, calls that, the. He, he said, my business is different in one of his books. He says, that's the rally cry of the broke. <laughs> <laughs> so it's all I love it. I don't think I heard that one. That wasn't good. Um yeah, it's true, and you know. But I want to go back, if we can, for a moment, uh, and talk about the struggles. You know, because it's easy. Everybody always quotes, you know, like Edison. Oh, I I didn't invent the light bulb. I just discovered, you know, ten thousand ways not to do it. You know, and so it sounds all romantic now. But when you're sitting there failing. Right, hour after hour, day after day, or you know, at least it feels like failure, right? Because you haven't had that success you think you know is out there, but you haven't gotten it yet. You know, how did you keep going? Um, I kept going because I had a family to feed. Um, <laughs> you know, and no, I mean I'm serious. Um, that my wife wanted to um, be at home with the kids. Um, now she does a little bit of nursing at night and that kind of thing as they're getting older. But I had a one-year-old when I started, and then we had another kid. And so literally it was I have to, or or I can do the opposite, which is go – I told her if it doesn't work out, maybe I'll just go to Home Depot and get a job. And so it, I just had to. And, and the other thing is that um, I, I – and we, we never were at a point – when I say we were desperate, we were desperate on cash flow and all that kind of stuff. But I, we were never at a point where, like, nobody was listening to us or we didn't have, like, any customers. We've always right. been able to make a sale. Um, but the desperate and miserable side of where we were was it, – it was just – that was great for today, but I had to make another one for tomorrow. Yep. Um, and that lifestyle – is just it wasn't good for my family. It wasn't good for me. It wasn't good for our business to scale. It wasn't good for for that. And so I say that say because there's some people that listen. And they go, oh, well, you failed at two things. Well, I didn't fail at two things necessarily where I ran out of money. I failed at two things to where they just didn't work. And so I just had to keep going, had to keep growing. And uh, honestly, and this sounds so weird for an entrepreneur broadcast. If I didn't have had my friend base and the support of my family, I would have quit. Right. Um, because just because they just said in those moments, I believe in you, and just an I believe in you, just a listen. If you can sell, you can do this. You just got to figure out which niche it is. That kind of thing. I believe in. You. And so that's what I would say to somebody listening today that may be struggling or they may be in that where they're not making as much money as they thought they would, or they bought into some entrepreneurial lie that it's going to be easy. Is that I will believe in you, um, and I believe you can, but you can't do it if you quit. And so I just I just kept going. I just kept going. Yeah, I didn't say if you're going through hell, don't stop, huh? Hey, there's some truth to that. I'm telling you, man, I think half of, I don't know, half or 60 or 70, I don't know how to put a percentage on it, is just keep selling something. Selling right. something. Not being stuck to the idea that you have this romanticized idea that I'm going to open up this you know, flower shop that's cool and it's going to work. If you're not selling flowers but you're selling uh, wedding something or another, you know, set up, then set, go to that. You got you can't get stuck in in that. And I've never been emotionally tied to my ideas from the standpoint of, like, it's got to be this or nothing else. And so I think that's been a ability, to just to be able to pivot. So I would tell people as well, just just make sure that if you, just whatever you're selling or whatever the – two questions I would ask. What are people asking you about? Just in life in general. If people are coming over and saying, man, you are the most organized person. How do you organize? How do you organize? And if you're selling organizational stuff or people want to buy that, well, then sell that. 
sell what you're good at, sell what people are asking, and sell what people will buy. So uh, yeah. that's that's kind of how we found our niche. But once we found it, we quit. So now we don't just go out and do stupid stuff. We don't go out. Now we've locked in and we're going, all right, we found it. Now this is what we're going to do to scale it. Right. Yeah, it's so important. I mean, people fall in love with an idea. Uh, and that, that was a big aha moment for me in this lifestyle, which was create uh, or sell something first, then go build it. Yes. And um, I didn't start that way. You know, it sounds like you, you kind of did, kind of didn't, but it was like, it was so scary to think, you know, go promote something, have a few people buy it, then go rush and create it, and then make it even better. But too many Well, that's people, what I'm doing now. Yeah. That's what I'm doing now. That's what Casey Graham is, is uh, CaseyGraham.com is. What I'm doing is I'm testing content and all this stuff, but then I'm just creating the program based on what I think people will buy, but I'm going to be selling coaching and help and all that kind of stuff and figuring it out as we go. Now, people will still get help, and they'll still get it to be organized and all that kind of stuff, but I don't know what it looks like. But go sell something. I agree with you. Sorry to cut you off, but, man, I just – just sell something. That Like right now, today, go sell something if you're listening to this. <laughs> doesn't matter what it is, but there's something about that that just creates a little bit of blood in the system that keeps the thing moving. And, uh, man, that's what I would suggest. Yeah, one of my old bosses, he used to say, you know, sales is the straw that stirs the drink, you know, back when I was in corporate America. Um, and and it's funny how things kind of go through a pendulum. You know, when I started the Sales Whisperer in 2006, I hadn't heard of Infusionsoft either. I was just doing sales training. And right. then sales and marketing are two sides of the same coin, right? And I found the automation and everything else and really embraced it and went whole hog. But now I'm coming back and, and kind of reemphasizing sales, you know, because all this stuff is beautiful. Like you say, the, the replication is how we build a lifestyle, right? But it takes a while to build that, you know, and I tell people, like, I still teach prospecting and cold calling. You know, it's not Absolutely. sexy. You know, it's not sexy, but, you know, if you know what you're doing, you and I can pick up the phone. Anybody can pick up the phone today, right now, and make a, make a call, reach somebody, uh, and, and eventually make a sale, probably today, with some effort, uh, granted. But, you know, it take, takes a while to buy a domain name, get your hosting set up, get your WordPress theme done, you know, build your email list. I mean, go get some PPC, driving traffic. I mean, all that takes time. Right, so I mean, do, do you think people? Uh, is it just fear? Or is it lazy? Or is it? I mean, are the people just always looking for a shortcut, and they and they're just drawn to it. I mean, how do we get entrepreneurs to just to double down and, and do the hard right things versus the, the the easy wrong things? Well, what I would say is just be careful who you're learning from. Um, and what I mean by that is like I had to quit reading um, success magazines for a little bit of time um, because I just felt awful the whole time I was reading them because I'm here, sitting here struggling and this guy's sitting here knocking it out of the park and all I'm reading is the success story. But what I found about it, the, the people who only tell their success stories is they never tell the back story. Right. And I, I learn from people who will tell me the back story. Right. I learn from people. I buy audios from people that will tell me the real deal and they're honest about it. And not everybody's going to say they're honest and all this kind of stuff. But anybody with crazy claims or like all this craziness and stuff that you money you can make all this stuff, just be careful because that stuff will suck you in, and then it will it'll lie to you to get you in. Um, and not that the people are liars. I don't know if they're liars or not. They probably made a million dollars overnight, but it's not replicatable. So learn from people who've been doing it a while, but they'll tell you the backstory. They'll, they'll, they'll talk, they'll ask you about your family. They'll ask you about your life. It's not just about the business. And so be careful who you're learning from is the first thing I would say. And then the second thing I would say is this on the other side, I would ask the question, and this is what I did even when we were failing is that I always had a coach. So get with real coaches that you pay money to. And here's what I tell people to, to do so that they'll do the work. I don't ever and I do sometimes. I'm not going to be extreme. Most of the time, if I'm paying a coach, the type of coaches I hire are the type of coaches who hold me accountable, not just give me advice. Right. So 
there's advice stuff I listen to and download audios and buy stuff. But if I'm hiring a personal one-on-one coach, they are asking me questions based upon goals I've set up to keep me. And so that's what I say. One of the biggest things I've seen with entrepreneurs is not that they have bad ideas. It's that they don't actually do the ideas in which they have. So pay a coach to be in your life to just ask you the hard questions and invest some money. Because if you're investing zero in coaching or zero in training or zero in the core area where you're trying to make money, if you're investing zero, zero investment equals zero improvement. And you will not improve and you will stay stuck. So be careful who you are in from number one, but also make sure you're investing something into coaching where people can hold you accountable and give you advice to get you to the next level. Yeah, it's it's so interesting that you bring that up because I just interviewed uh, Marshawn Evans uh, in this previous podcast, and she was like a former Miss DC, Georgetown Law. She was on the on Donald Trump's The Apprentice, uh, and she talked about uh, the difference actually between a mentor and a coach. You know, she kind of yeah. got into that. You know, a mentor just kind of bring you along, but a coach is somebody you're paying. To hold yeah, you accountable, so, so you know, yeah. so back to back interviews from successful people saying the same thing. So I hope everybody's listening <laughs> takes that to heart um, and and get some success or get somebody to hold them accountable. So and that was what, something I wanted to bring up. You know, did you did you have coaches uh, like local people? I mean, were they famous? Were you in groups like Dan Kennedy's groups? You know, the inner circle type things or what? What were you in in the beginning to keep you going? Yeah, the 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 um, the stuff started local at first. I mean, I'm talking about like I just had people that were local and nobody knew who they were, nobody would care, and they don't care. They're not trying to be just local people that that you can get around. Um, I even had people that were um, CEOs of other companies that I meet with that weren't necessarily mentoring, but they wanted to coach people. They hadn't got it figured out. That's early on. Then very soon I started paying for coaching. And I paid for people. Here's who I pay for. I paid for people that had niche advice at first. And what I meant is I needed to figure out how to sell online, so I hired a lady for $12,000 who won the Dan Kennedy equivalent to the Infusionsoft Marketer of the Year. She won the Dan Kennedy Marketer of the Year, whatever it is. And I just walked up to her after the conference and said, well, I didn't hire Dan. Now, I love Dan. I read all his books and all that stuff, but I didn't need Dan then. What I needed, I needed her. I needed somebody that was about five steps down from Dan that told me just about how to send an email out that people would click on. I didn't need to know bigger strategies than that. I didn't need a big marketing strategy. I didn't need direct mail and three-step letter campaigns. I needed just to learn how to send emails out. So pay for that niche advice. Um, That's where I started. So I would say inside of your coaching, don't just look for a generalist. Look for a specialist. Then as your company grows, and now that I'm in the role of CEO, I currently have coaches that coach CEOs over companies because now my niche is that we have a company. I have 10 people that work for us. We're about to have 11, and I've got to learn how to run a business. This is not marketing and sales anymore. This is an actual company with people who are depending on a paycheck. Right. So I say that to say I would buy the coach based on the niche and the need that you currently need the most not just on who's the famous guy or who has the book, my opinion. Um, yeah, it's interesting you say that about keep getting coaches. I I wrote a, wrote a report a while back. i got to look it up. I forget exactly. It was like the number one reason your sales are down, your stress is up, and you're running on empty. It was something like that. But it, I talked about how, you know, John Wayne um, was an actor, right? Uh, it, but that – Story, that legend, that myth, you know, has propagated through American society and entrepreneurs to our detriment, right, where we think we can just go out alone, right? You know, but even in his darkest moments, he had, he had good tools, right? He had a good horse, and even if he didn't have his horse, he had a good rifle, you know, and a good, and a good pistol. I mean, but it was, it was all make-believe. You know, and if you peel that back, right, thinking about he's an actor. So there's a hundred people making that movie come to life, you know, and he had directors and everything else. So, you know, I'm glad you bring that up. It's because I think we have this entrepreneur, this pioneer spirit, which is great, right, and it made our country great. But, you know, those pioneers, 
Uh, even they owe the pilgrims, right? They needed the local Indians to help them survive that first winter. Um, you know, we need help along the way, and, and it's not a sign of weakness, right? It's a sign of strength that that you're willing to go out, admit what you don't know, and go get strong on that. Yep, I agree. Uh, now, flip side of that, I always people always get on me. Life's like a it's two sides of the same coin, right? On the flip side, what is your recommendation on improving your weaknesses versus just outsourcing the weakness? Um, well, here's my my thoughts on that. Are, everybody talks about working inside your strengths, and I agree that you should work inside your strengths, but you should also minimize your weaknesses to where they don't hurt you. So okay. my goal is never like for instance I just suck at like emails and like when I so when I started out like I had papers all in my car and all that kind of stuff um, emails stacking I just I'm just not administrative at all I'm completely relational hey let's just go grab a beer some coffee hang out like if I have a great conversation this interview today you know I feel like I've done something great it's great now I'm not going to answer the emails that are sitting there I'm not going to do the things however when I did not have assistance and staff and all that kind of stuff. I forced myself. Now, this is the side of it that was miserable. After my kids went to bed, my wife was sitting there watching Grey's Anatomy, and I would sit there for an hour, and I would pound out all the administrative details that I had to do. Or I would come, and I would do like a binge half day a week where I just binge all the administration. I hated it the whole time. But I did it because I could not – I mean, how, how could I ask these people to hire me to coach them if I couldn't even get back with them on email? Mm-hmm. And so I just say that to say when you're starting out, you don't have the luxury to work inside your strengths all the time. Right. Um, so – but utilize your strengths to keep you surviving, but also don't let your weaknesses – um, you know, hinder you so bad that it kills you. So it's really a management. Now, as you grow – as we've grown, I don't do my email anymore. You know, I don't administrative stuff. I don't do, um, and I've gotten to where I focus more and more and more and more on my strengths. But it's never been because it's because I slowly work myself out of it. The second thing I would say is that you can't just outsource stuff fast and expect it to work. Outsourcing stuff still requires you to be involved, and that's where I messed up when I tried to use outsource people like bookkeeping and outsourced administrative assistance is that I just was like, all right, I'll pay the 500 bucks a month and I don't ever want to think about it again. Well, that's just poor stewardship. I mean, that's poor business. I have to stay involved in things that I don't necessarily love, but they're things that are vital uh, to the organization as a whole. And so I'd say if you're going to outsource stuff, that's great. Make sure you have a weekly meeting with them. You know, make sure you have the right things or you're going to waste money. So I even did that with web designers, you know, just outsource it and just, and then it come back, it wouldn't be what I want. And it was the third revision. I was stuck. I was out money and it didn't even work when I got it, but it's cause I didn't want to pay attention to it. So stay engaged in places that you're weak and slowly over time move out of them, but don't just think you can be in business. Just do what you're strong at and outsource everything else. Um, that comes over time. It doesn't come in a day. Yeah. I learned that in the air force. You know, they said you, you could delegate, um, what's that? You could delegate authority, but not responsibility. Yes. Right. So even if you're the boss, somebody else can go act on your behalf. But if things blow up, you own it. Yes. Yes. Yep. So, good lessons to learn. <laughs> and uh, like they say, uh, good. What is it? Good judgment comes from experience, and experience comes from bad judgment. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's so true. <laughs> Uh, so, all right. So you embraced Infusionsoft. You you got you you did this blast. So again, peeling back the the onion, right? Um, you did your first blast, but it sounds like you did two things right in the beginning. A, you had a list, and B, you had something to give them. You said you had some type of three hour uh, audio. I mean, what what was that? Yeah, I just had a record. I spoke at a conference, and they just happened to record it. And so I ha- so I got the recording from them because I just said, "Oh, cool, it's a recording." And so it was. They just recorded my three-hour uh, workshop. 
Okay. It was inside of a bigger conference. It wasn't one. I was just a spe- I was a breakout speaker at a conference on okay. church finance, and so they had me in there. And so I think there's only, you know, fifteen or twenty people in the room. I mean, it wasn't anything great, and the audio was, you know, wasn't great. But um, that's what it was. So that's where it came from. So that there's a principle there, though. And I and I always talk to entrepreneurs about this: is look around. Just look around at what you have. Like everybody thinks, I got to create this new product. I got to create this new thing. I'm like, what if your next big thing is your current small thing? What if your mm-hmm. next big thing is the thing that is sitting on your desk, but you just haven't thought? You're so busy, but you haven't thought long. And that's how it was for me. I just hadn't thought, and I'm not, I didn't have a coach. See, the success coach. That's the title at Infusion Soft. Success coach asked me a question. What do you have? When are you going to send out your first broadcast? And I say, what's a broadcast? And he says, what do you have you can sell? I don't have anything I can sell. Are you sure? Have you thought about this, 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 this? I paid for Infusion Soft Coaching. Just that alone, just that alone, worth millions of dollars. Those two questions. Mm-hmm. And, and I say that to say, just look around because there's stuff that you have that you can sell, that you can package, that you think is junk. You think it's just something laying there, but it can absolutely work. So that's what it was. It was a mistake. <laughs> well, but was it? I mean, I, I tell people, I, I, as I've grown, I, I'm putting a little more technology in, in the place because I've got a better team. But, you know, I've built up the Sales Whisperer as a, a lone ranger, right? And, and I still I always tell people my claim to fame with the, the Infusionsoft consultant world is, yeah, I'm the oddball because I'm a sales and marketing guy that learned this stuff from the ground up be, versus being a technologist uh, jumping into it. So I try to tell people, I still keep things as simple as possible to say, look, I use this stuff right out of the box, right? No supercharging uh, to help them. And so I show them, get an iPhone, you know, get your smartphone. There's recording tools on there. I have like a $20 recording program. I just did it. I did that same thing yesterday. On my iPhone in my car outside of Starbucks. Yep. Just get it done, right? I mean, I, the camera I upload to YouTube. I bought a little uh, twenty dollar thing called an X Shot. It's like this this arm that extends. Um, let me see, I got it right here. And I, and I bought this little eye stabilizer, right? That just screws on the top, and you can clip in your iPhone. So this thing just lets you hold your camera out a little bit farther, so you're not like right in the face. But I tell people. Create content, you know, like you said, I think we all take for granted how valuable our knowledge and experience is, right? I mean, people will pay. You said it earlier. What are they coming to you for? If people are coming to you all the time, then they see you as a valuable resource of that information. Record it and put it out there. I mean, I'm serious. Like, if people are all the time asking you about parenting questions – then there's parenting content in your brain that if you put on a blog, that if there's if there's 20 people asking you questions, you know, 10,000 people will go read it. And right. And, and, and people, don't, dentists, it, you know, if, if other dentists, that's you know, um, Dustin, who is one of the Infusionsoft finalists as, as well, he he learned this. He was a dentist. He's a dentist. But people, other dentists, started saying, "Well, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing?" So what did he do? He created a side income stream where he trains dentists because he had a bunch of dentists saying, what do you do? Right. And, and I'm not saying that just because you have people asking you questions, you need to create a business around it. But I am saying if you are a, co- a company person and you've got people asking you questions about specific things and they see you as the expert, even if it's on something tiny, like payroll. If you just know a bunch about payroll, well, I promise you there's a living in payroll. You know, <laughs> anyway – so uh, I also heard Dan Kennedy one time say, "There's no niche too small if you're the if you dominate it." And so yeah. any little niche you're in, that kind of thing, man. Anybody asking questions, that that is that's huge, absolutely huge. Well, so the other thing you did though, you had a list, right? I mean, you you saved, you acquired names, you saved them somehow, right? And and you were able to to reach out because again dan can you talk about your most prized possession is your list you know the money's in the list Um, well and that was a yeah and and i'm and and that was just because i didn't eat just for two and a half years i just kept email addresses like on a notepad and 
this thing, and then I would, like, every now and again, uh, I just put them in a thing called Zoho. It was terrible. But I just entered it into Zoho, which is a – it was basically a cemetery for email addresses. I mean, there was nothing you could do with them. (laughs) You just put them in there. But when it came time, I had 832 email addresses. And so we exported the 832 into Infusionsoft. And so, boom, we have 832 email addresses, and then we have a three-hour audio recording, and that's how we got our start. And so, so you sold that recording for how much? 99 bucks, and I can't remember exactly how much it was that we made. I know it was over $2,000. I don't know exactly how much it was. I can't remember, but I know it was a couple thousand dollars because I remember going, wow, I just made more doing that than I do when I travel and go do a whole day of consulting. I need mm-hmm. to do more of that. <laughs> so, where, where did you host it? Like Amazon S3 or something like that? Nope. Didn't know about any of that. We actually put it on a, a – this is – I don't even know if this exists anymore. Um, it was called eJunkie. You ever heard of that? Uh-huh. No. It was, some, it was some product thing. It was terrible, too, because they had to get a code and, like, email the code to them and put the code in. But after three days, they couldn't download it anymore. I mean, so it was terrible as it relates to – how it worked, but the money went in the bank, and most of them got the recording the day of and downloaded it, and it, it worked. Yeah, but that's you know that's how it happened. Hey, that's cool. You know, get it done, right? I mean, that we didn't have a payment gateway either. So Brandon, <laughs> the the guy that was helping me, said, "Well, you got to get all this in merchant account crap set up in Infusionsoft." I was like, "I don't know how to do any of that." But I've got a PayPal account. He said, "All right, we'll just put it on there and put a PayPal button down there." So we. Put it on, but but the, and it wasn't even an offer. I just it just said ninety nine dollars. Here's an audio, you can buy it. I mean it was terrible. It was the worst case scenario. There was no headline. There was no copy. It was just here it is. But I had two years of working with these eight hundred thirty two people that they would call me and ask me for my consulting, and I was too expensive for them. And so now that I sell and something for ninety nine dollars, they jumped all over it. And so that's kinda of how it all came together. That's fantastic. I mean I I'd talk about when I got certified with Infusionsoft. You know, I I didn't know any of that. We had to we had to have a website to embed the web form to pass the test. And I never created a website. I mean I was learning Weebly, right? This little free website creator so I could embed HTML. You know, and yep. and now I'm a whiz at WordPress, but I had to go through that. I went to Jimdo, created better sites, and and, and I learned WordPress. And but you got to get started, right? Yeah, yep, I absolutely agree. I mean, people they, they just sit around too long trying to trying to get things perfect, and um, they never get started. And that's the worst thing. Because what you say earlier, you said entrepreneurs. Not, it's not that they don't have good ideas; they just don't take action on them. And it's simple. It's simple. I, I mean, let me break it down. Sell something. It doesn't matter what it is. Sell something and sell it today. Sell it right now. This weekend, send an email. Ask somebody from – sell it. Quit creating the perfect thing. Quit doing all this stuff. And i got to get – I mean, some, so many people – I tell people not to buy into the pipe dream on the infusion soft side of things to where they go and then they hear us speak about ultimate marketers – and we've got, like, lead captures and 58 sequences and decision trees and blah, 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 blah. If you're starting out, you need, you need one thing. You need an email address, and you need to type emails to them. Even if it's not automated, sit in your house and type an email to them two times a week. <laughs> I mean, sell your list something. Call mm-hmm. somebody. And so keep it simple because if you get – I'm telling you, complexity – is the absolute killer of momentum. And if you are too complex early on, you're just not going to get off the ground. So keep yep. it simple. Yep. Um, and, again, it's it's the two sides of the same coin because people will hear Dan Kennedy say embrace complexity, right, and they'll kind of scratch their head. But the idea is as you build your business, you know, you will have competition. You will have people try to rip you off. So the more steps and the sequences and all, you're going to need that for sustainability, right, and, and to keep the competition at bay. But in the beginning – Not start up. Yeah, in the beginning, you got to start. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, I love the fact, I mean, that, that you did record 
the the conference or you were smart enough to go get the recording, even though it wasn't great. You know, I have the Seven Deadly Sins of Selling, and that started out like as a five-page little booklet. You know, now it's up to 32 pages, and it's a CD and everything else. But, yeah. you know, it went to five to 12 to 17 to 22 pages, and, you know, and I'm still improving on it. But it's been out there for five years making me money and generating leads. Um, but, yeah, I think – is it just fear, you think, or – you know, I, I always think people are more afraid of success than failure. Yeah, I don't. I don't think it. I, I don't know what it is, but I, I know it's just the inability, or the not inability, the lack of desire to sell something. Just sell. Just sell it. And I can say that because I'm a sales guy, but I wasn't always a sales guy. And you just got to sell stuff. And some people are, you know how to sell stuff better than others naturally, but just sell something. Because once you start getting a money flow, it will it, the, your crowd will come to you, not you don't have to figure out where you're going to go to it. And so just sell something. Sell that product. Sell that information. Sell that service. Sell the consulting. But you don't even know what it looks like yet. Just sell it. Just, just, just sell it. Ask somebody for money today. <laughs> right. That's what I'd say. Amen. Well, I know you are driving somewhere, and you pulled over off the road, so um, I want to uh, be um, respectful of your time. You now have CaseyGraham.com, right? C-A-S-E-Y-G-R-A-H-A-M. So is that the, the best place for, uh, for people to, to find you and connect with you? Yep. I would say if you want to learn from an entrepreneur to an entrepreneur, a business owner to a business owner there, and if you want to use our company to look at just how we operate Infusionsoft and how we have automation and complexity that operates inside of Infusionsoft or whatever, then go to the Rocket Company, T-H-E, Rocket Company, therocketcompany.com, and you okay. can learn from uh, the company there. So look forward to seeing you on the blog. Look forward to learning from you. If there's anything you need, um, you know, just go to the blog, and we have contact information, and I'd love to, love to serve you. All right. Well, thanks for your time, and uh, have a great weekend, and um, I look forward to catching up with you soon. All right, bud. Thank you. All right, man. Thanks, Casey. So how's that for a meaty interview? If you are one of those crazy, wild-eyed, shiny, object-chasing entrepreneurs, rest assured that you are not alone. However, you do have to focus. you got to buckle down. you got to see uh, what is working and what isn't, uh, and focus on what is and stop doing what isn't. As you saw with uh, Casey, he had some content, he had a list, he made an offer, and his business grew from there. Figure out what you can do to create some content in any form, grainy phone calls, shaky videos, um, use your iPhone, your Android, put up some YouTube videos, create the content, start getting the word out. I, I like to say, pull the trigger and ride the bullet. Uh, And as always, please take a moment, if you're on my website, leave a comment uh, on the blog underneath this podcast, Uh, follow the link to iTunes, Uh, leave a five-star review. Uh, The more reviews I get, the more traffic I get, the more traffic I get, uh, the more prospects and clients I end up landing, uh, which helps me keep this podcast free. So I appreciate your feedback, your ratings, your tweeting, your sharing, Um, And as always, I appreciate you taking the time to listen. And remember, sell different. Thank you for listening to the Sales Whisperer podcast at www.thesaleswhisperer.com.